everyone. We are live. We got a uh, ad hoc show tonight that wasn't really scheduled. We decided to put this together last minute to discuss an important issue that we uh, see. Uh, and you know what? I can't stand how YouTube has gotten rid of the mute button for, uh, you know, so you can't mute the show before it goes live. I got to figure out some way to deal with that. So sorry about that. But uh, we got that muted. Uh, anyway, ad hoc show tonight uh, to get into the GDL or the Goyam Defense League, which is essentially a paid shill leftist uh, hate group that goes around and spreads lies all over the Internet, does hit pieces on people. I brought on uh, uh, Halsley English today uh, of Halsley News, and uh, Halsley has been looking into them since their beginnings, which was around July or August of 2008. So, uh, Halsley, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing, man? It's good to be here. Well, you know, we got a, we got a lot to uh, cover here. And, uh, you know, like uh, Matthew Sharp pointed out, 15, 18 dislikes before the show we even started. The, uh, the uh, GDL is out in strength with all of their sock puppet accounts tonight trying to squash the video as quickly as they can because they hate the truth about themselves being exposed. So who do, who do we start with on these guys? You want to start with the the top, go to uh, the event with Charlottesville and uh, Patrick Little? So here's here's how it goes, right? There's a, a multi-billionaire named Tom Steyer. OK, he runs the impeach Trump movement. He's a, he's a real shady guy. He wants to be the next Soros when Soros turns like 180 and finally dies. So he's, he's been running a lot of stuff. But in 2013, he started experimenting with using paid actors to kind of embarrass his, uh, the political opposition of the people that he was supporting. He started with a group called Tiger Media, which um, hired a, actually hired a friend of mine and got got them to get paid actors to wear makeup as um, I'm never going to remember his name. Tom, um, I want to say Colicci or Coluccio or Colec something like that. Cuccio or something like Cuccinelli. that. Cuccinelli. 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 That's there it. you go. Tom Cuccinelli. And he was running against Terry McAuliffe, who's like, you know, the ultimate green leftist, just like Tom Steyer. So he got this group to dress up like Cuccinelli and run around and cause problems, you know, and make Cuccinelli look like an asshole. And also he, he, he wanted Cuccinelli to come out and go, oh, why are they like, why like to look like kind of like an old fuddy duddy? that he was, he was so bothered by this and all of that. But it was right around that time that Tiger Media and all of the other PR companies that Steyer owned all came into an umbrella group called Next Gen Climate, okay? And Next Gen Climate has been his political action committee ever since. So there was a girl named Samaria Salazar who worked for, for Next Gen Climate. And she recruited Augustus Invictus, she recruited Baked Alaska, she recruited this guy, Patrick Little, who, who I'm sure you all have heard about, and she recruited the GDL founders, John Minadeo. There was a guy named, um, what did he go by? He went, he went by some Sway Guevara or something like that on Twitter. I don't know what his name actually was. And there was another guy that, I, his name slips my mind right now, but I could, I could find it out pretty quickly, that was running all of, uh, Packhurst, Mike Parkhurst was his name. And he was running all their websites. He, they, he launched some new like social media site that was all GDL. He had like, um, one was fuckthejews.com, one was johnminadeo.com, one was gdl.com. And they appeared out of nowhere in around August, right? Where Handsome Truth, the leader of the GDL, um, he had 12 YouTube channels and a whole bunch of Twitter accounts and all this. And he just appeared as this new guy who was going to help, you know, unite the world against the Jews. Now, what he forgot to tell everybody was that he's a failed rapper named Shuby DeWop, okay? Right. And he has, he has all these silly things, and he's also a Bernie bro, okay? So what he... So what there, he are, there are all these... There are all these and, and what people don't realize is that the, the National Socialists of Germany were actually leftists because socialism is a left ideology. But so, you know, here we have uh, Handsome Truth or John Minadeo, who is actually this hardcore leftist who's apparently taking uh, money to run this uh, GDL hate group and pump, pump out all this kill the Jews and kill the gays crap. Well, it took, it, you know, before he was doing the kill the Jews, kill everybody, you know, Muslims are awesome thing. He was um, actually all over, uh, all over Facebook criticizing Ellen DeGeneres for having Hillary Clinton on because Hillary Clinton was so anti-gay. 
So that that's what his his deal was. And he was also, as I said, he was doing this rap gig where he was shooby to wop. He was like banging all of this stuff. Um, and what I, I actually like it when the GDL shows up to my streams because they're so ridiculous that they just make my entire crowd laugh. And what people always forget is that handsome truth at one point, you know, I challenged him to a debate. He said, oh, OK, I'll debate you anytime. And then all of a sudden it was, well, wait, no, I don't want you to debate me. Debate Adam Green. And I said, no, I'm not going to debate your underling. I don't I don't debate second fiddle. I was like, if you're if you're too much of a coward, then we just won't do it. And so he waited until the Sabbath, which, of course, I wasn't online. And he says, oh, I want to box him. I want to get him in a ring and I want to I want to beat him down. Right. And oh, yeah, he never called for violence. He said he was going to he wanted to box me. How is that not calling for violence? And so secondly, so I, of course, came back from the Sabbath, said any day, any time, this will be awesome. And I also said that I was going to pay some Hasidic Jews that after I knocked him out, they would teabag his face and I could take some pictures and put it all over Twitter. And then all of a sudden he disappeared. He wouldn't come near my streams. He wouldn't come out anymore. And then out of nowhere, he appeared like maybe a couple months ago and he threw a super chat up about the Jews doing 911. And then out of and then out of nowhere, he says, oh, you really want to go? And my whole chat just like kind of erupted on him and was like, let's do it. Let's come on. And he disappeared, of course. Well, you see this Trinell 88, whom you've uh, dealt with before, saying, Handsome Truth never called for violence. And in your videos, your other videos, you've already shown this person that that's fa a false statement. And yet here they are in this chat posting up the same lies that he didn't do that. Of course not, because you know why? They have nothing to gain from telling the truth. Right. That's the whole point is, is they're, they're paid shills. So they're, they're not out there to actually go and try to expose something or try to criticize something. What they're doing is taking money from leftist billionaires, right? And they're, what they're trying to do is they claim that their whole quick came, uh, call to being just like Pat Little is to name the Jew, is to go out there and point out every Jew that's doing something wrong. But what they're doing is they're giving the left the ability to name the Nazi. Right. Is that every time the left comes on and says we need to so censor people on social media, we need to we need to stop people from you know being able to post. We need to stop people from being able to speak on college campuses and people go. But why? Like, where are all these Nazis? And then you can go, oh, there they are. They can they point at these page shield GDL people. And, uh, you know, and the, so the GDL people show up in my chats and everything and they paint all this and then they. You know, of course, we block them or they'll cause a stir and then they'll block each other and this kind of, you know, kind of stuff. Why don't you talk about how they block each other's uh, posts from their own group? Well, that, that's well, what they do is they, they show up into the chats and they start saying stuff like, oh, the Jews did 911 or deport all Jews or stuff like that. Or they, they start with all the comments. And then what they do is they report each other so that it'll get it'll get YouTube to start looking at your chats. Because remember, they, they kicked Ralph off for, from the Ralph retort for his you know, toxic chats, and they've kicked a lot of people off for their chats, not for anything that they've done on the show, just for what they've done in the chats. So they hope that if they report enough of each other, because they have 500 sock accounts, you know, like this Tony Barbera guy, like he shows up as a whole bunch of different things. He's a Mexican gringo. He's gringo something like he shows up all over the place. And, well, he's always got and, and I see uh, Gary Donison shows up often. Also, this love is a four letter word. That is actually, you know, one of the people that they have, uh, listed on their uh, uh, GDL website, you know, and I wish I would have used a VPN before I heard you guys say that they uh, use phishing to monitor anybody who goes to that website so that they can report you as a hatist for going to their GDL site. But, um, you know, so these people, there's, you know, there's a number of them uh, out there, uh, a number of new ones I've seen come up recently as well. Uh, you mentioned, um, Adam Green a bit ago, what can you say about him? He claims to have disassociated himself with the GDL. He may have. I mean, a lot of people did after we first exposed what was going on. Michael Parkhurst had this website, all of these websites that the GDL had in all of their Twitter accounts and everything, go here, go there. And we had it checked out and it was loaded with phishing software, like professional grade phishing software. So if you didn't sign up for their GDL website or for their crap uh, social media sites, they would still get your information because remember that's their goal. Their goal is to basically dox people is to get people out there and go, Oh, look at all these Nazis. Look at all these people that are out there supporting all of this stuff. Look at all these people who are out there, you know, wanting to kill Jews and kill, kill blacks and all of that. So this is what they do, you know? Right. And, and they, and anybody who disagrees with them, they call a Jew like this. Oh, hottie paradise found. Are you related to the Jew Jewish millionaire, Seth Rogen at logos media? 
You know, for those of you who aren't smart enough, Jan is actually a Danish name, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm Danish and Welsh, so, you know, uh, calling everybody a Jew who disagrees with your hate, kill the Jews, kill the uh, gays rhetoric, that doesn't work. That's pretty stupid. I'm glad uh, New York Bad Boy showed up. Uh, he's another one that's listed on the uh, on the uh, GDL website, and there's a few others that I flushed out. There's a guy... I'm going to show him right here, and he's even got his uh, GDL website uh, or T-shirt on. He's another paid shill. He's actually done about eight or nine uh, uh, hit piece videos on me in the last couple of weeks. That's a guy by the name of Albert Bashai. And, uh, you know, he, he this guy is just over the top with his uh, name calling his stuff. And I was in the middle of moving, and this guy starts screaming at me to call him and calling me a coward on all this stuff because I didn't call him while I was in the middle of moving. Um, you know, uh, all of these people, it, it, what's interesting is, uh, well, let's get into um, Daniel Walker, Activist News. What can you say about him? Now, he was actively promoting and mentioned it in about uh, 10 different chats that I can show on screen here, in fact, uh, actively calling for the death of gays uh, in the chat on my show a couple weeks ago and again last week as well. Well, that's that's what he, as I said, that's what he wants to do. He knows how toxic it is to write stuff like that in chats and then he'll he'll hope that somebody reports him, you know, and, and that way he'll do it or he'll have all these GDL faggots do it. I mean, think about this. They claim to be an activist group that are out there, you know, actually, you know, trying to, to change things and to, to expose the Jew when all they do is come to YouTube chats and start shit. Like right. that's the, that's literally the extent of their penis size is that they actually can come to a YouTube chat and talk smack. Right. Like I mean it it's literally the most pathetic view of anything that you could possibly have. You know? So and and they they honestly believe that they can sit here and when you show them proof of what they're doing, then they go, "Oh my god, you're lying." Yeah. Like how like 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 Exactly. They they invert so, everything back on their target. And, uh, you know, activist news in this one, he's so stupid. Why do Jews use the Baphomet star in their APAC symbol? He doesn't even understand the difference between the pentagram and the uh, hexagram. Of but, course. You know, uh, that's always, you know, amusing. But uh, uh, let's see. Oh, here's another good one from uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel Walker of Activist News. And I think he's in Australia. The Bible endorses the death penalty for homosexuality. You know what? And then this week he came out. Uh, with a new video backpedaling on all of his kill the homosexual speech, saying that we were misquoting him. These are actually just screen captures of what he said. So, of course, he's going to invert and then, you know, cry victim of uh, things that he said. Here's another one there. Uh, uh, here's uh, Handsome True saying, Jan Irvin plus Adam Green, InfoWars Agenda 2.0. Alex Jones, I don't know what you have to say about him, but he invited me on the show a couple of months ago, and I went on because, you know, I exposed him Kiltra, and I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity. So, of course, going on his show automatically made me a Jewish shill by these guys, and then they have these loose associa- associations. And here's Handsome Truth calling one of my guests a effing crypto Jew. Get the F out of here, you Mossad agent. You know, Uh, suck on it. So, you know, this is what these guys do. Essentially, anybody who calls them out as the frauds they are, the paid shills that they are, they immediately flip the rhetoric on them and go on the attack and cry victim. Well, they do that. But I mean, as I said, what their goal is, is to do is, I mean, they sit here and expect you to believe them that they're here, you know, spreading truth or whatever. But yet they show up and 32 of them already marked a downvote on your channel right. when before you even said a word. Exactly. You know? Like and, and they expect you, which to is the, the utmost cowardice that. possible, you know. Handsome Truth was making the point that people who sell truth for shekels can't be trusted. He sells truth for shekels. That's what he does is that he believes that what he's saying is true, which it isn't. I mean, he's just reading talking points. If you actually ever challenge him on anything, he gets frustrated and just starts telling you to suck dicks and stuff like that. Yeah. Like he, he doesn't actually have any information. So when you say to him like, oh, okay, explain to me how the Jews did 9-1, he'll be like, well, the Mossad did this. And you'll be like, okay, so how did you find this out? They just did. And if you're like, okay, but that's not evidence, that's your opinion, or that's something you're making up, then all of a sudden he goes, oh, you're just a crypto Jew and a Mossad agent. You know, suck right. a dick. Right. Like, I mean, yeah. that's what he does. Because honestly, a handsome truth is probably the biggest moron out of all of them. 
Like he doesn't even have any brains. Well, I, you know? I, I agree with you on that. And I've had a few interactions with him. And of course, what he'll, he'll do is being funded, he can post up, you know, super chats and whatnot. And then, uh, you know, uh, name call, whatever. But, you know, one, one of these things that I find interesting is that he lives right off of the Petaluma Air Base, the air station up in Northern California. You know, they all live in the San Francisco area. Right. So you know. and, and, you know, they all they all apparently, you know, it's like if, if you're uh, and you can probably go into this research on Tom Steyer more. But if they're tied into Tom Steyer, he was hanging out directly with uh, Obama, and he appears to, you know, I mean, the GDL actually appears to be a, C, a CIA cell, in my opinion. It, I mean, it could, there could be some involvement. I don't get into that kind of stuff, whether it's, it's government involvement or anything like that. I just kind of follow what, what I can. Right. But, I mean, we had, we had six people working on this ever since Handsome Truth, like, came on, you know, because it just was too convenient that right after Pat Little got literally crushed in his Senate run, where, you know, he, he was expecting all of this and he got, like, 2% of the vote, right? Like it was right after him that all of a sudden handsome truth and all these others came out and they said, no, 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 we're, we're not for violence. We're not for violence. We just believe that they should all be deported. Right. Really? Well, how is that done in a non-physical way? Like, I mean, he expects that you'll say that you can deport people without using violence, <laughs> you know, literally like millions of people, you can kick them out of the country, but there won't be any violence involved. That you makes, know? that makes no sense at all. Yeah, of they're course. they're going haywire in the chat here. They're uh, they're absolutely out of control. I mean, you know, it's like you're taking dirty money to spread lies and hate, and then you're upset when people call your whole group out for what you are—a bunch of paid shills and frauds who go around trying to get real channels shut down for exposing people like you, and for exposing how the Talmud quotes that you all spread around are actually fakes, like. You know, our last uh, show before last with uh, Lloyd DeYoung and our, our series on that, you know, and, you know, we, we started realizing all these these tie-ins between these these uh, people and Islam. Would you like to talk about that? Well, the tie-in with them in Islam is that everybody on the left loves Islam because Islam is the ultimate red pill for, for other people. If, if you want to get people like the right up and crazy or you want to get people that aren't really committed to Marxism up and crazy, you throw Islam in their face because that's why Islamophobe is the new um, homophobe right. because homophobe doesn't work anymore because now gays are allowed to get married. Right. So, so homophobe doesn't work anymore. So now everybody's either a transphobe or, or an Islamophobe. Right? And, and, and we obviously sold out for daring to question their Jew hating agenda or for exposing Islam or for exposing that Baphomet is actually from Muhammad right out of the Oxford English Dictionary, etc. So they can't. I, I've noticed that these people who claim to be truthers have zero capacity to handle truth, uh, much less admit when they're wrong, you know, and. And Handsome Truth even said to uh, Lloyd de Jong that, you know, if he's proved wrong, and he spread all these lies and all this hate against Lloyd, and they said, if I'm proved wrong, I'll apologize. So, of course, Lloyd proved him wrong, and then he refuses to apologize. And then he found, uh, you know, Lloyd teaches martial arts, and so he've, he's like, oh, this must be this one Jewish type of martial arts. Therefore, you're a Jewish Mossad agent, you know, and it's just, of course, you know, it's, it's, you know, they have their intellectual midgets and they can't deal with facts. And so they have to deal with in, in these sort of tactics. They cannot deal with any sort of uh, fact based information. And there's another one that came out right around, um, June or no, excuse me, July or August. This guy here, a guy by the name of uh, Chris Weinert, and he's done some hit pieces on me as well. But this guy also showed up, and he's got all these videos uh, praising uh, Handsome Truth, and Handsome Truth has never lied, and all this kind of stuff. But he showed up. Uh, he, he started producing videos right in June, right, with the rest of these uh, GDL folks. Which is right when the, the primary was held and Pat Little got housed in the election. That's when the next group came in, which was the GDL. And so they're asking, how much do I think these trolls get paid? I don't think these trolls get paid anything. I think Handsome Truth gets paid. I think Michael Harker, Mark Parkers gets paid. I think the ones who started it get paid. And they're, they love to use it. Handsome Truth never asked for anything. 
right? Because Handsome Truth is so independently wealthy that he can run a national organization for free. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, they don't see that that's actually, hmm, evidence against John Minadeo, which is Handsome Truth's name. Right. If, that, that he never asks for anything. He just has the money to do whatever. He's a failed actor. He's a failed rapper. He lives in, supposedly in like a tiny little apartment. And yet he has the money to pay for everything for the GDL, you know, to buy T-shirts, to do everything. And, you know, yet yeah. he doesn't ever ask for money. Look at all this. Jan has gone full shill. He's sold out for shekels. You know, the only money I get is from donations for the show. And, uh, you know, which isn't a lot. Um, somebody's saying, you know, they, what they'll do is they'll cite a hit piece on me and then say that I've been exposed in the hit piece. So they start citing their own hit pieces and whatnot against me. It's pretty ridiculous. Well, because what they are, are they're, they're anti-Jew, anti-vaxxers, right? Like, have you ever had an argument with an anti-vaxxer? And no matter what you point out to them, they'll just constantly move the goalposts until they can't move the goalposts any further. Well, and I, I know some people that are actually extremely well researched in anti-vaccination. I won't, I don't want to get into that, but we can. No, but what, I'm not talking about them. Right. I'm talking about the people that aren't well researched in anything. Okay. They, they've heard a couple, you know, minor quotes, and they'll keep moving the goalposts until they tell you to do your research. Right. That's always their end response. Do your research. They won't be able to cite anything. They won't be able to show you any sources or anything. It's the same thing with flat earthers. Right. That maybe that's a better example is they'll tell you that the earth is flat. Everyone knows the earth is flat. Here's the evidence. I'm telling you it's flat. And you'll say, OK, well, what evidence do you actually have? And they'll go do your research. Right. Which means and, go on Google and type shit. And, you know, what I recommend people do in the chat who aren't uh, fake accounts is click on these people's names and go to their accounts and you'll see that nearly all of them are sock accounts you know over and over the accounts were just created they only have one to five subscribers uh no content etc and over and over and over you'll see that i mean these people are literal cowards they're you know they have to spread whatever bs that they can you know so this is how they act you know and they just they come in overwhelming the chat with their lies and their you know insults and then and then they pretend like they won and that they're actual you know people in the truth movement when they are they have nothing to do with truth oh exactly and i i know that i know that amy gets upset because i know that she's actually very well versed on anti-vaccine stuff right so she's one of the ones who actually does know quite a bit about it but I knew she would get offended because I didn't qualify by saying that. Actually, I know. Well, and I, I know some good people that are extremely well researched in it, and they could debate anybody. I've also interviewed uh, Dr. Andrew Wakefield on the show, who, of course, uh, lost his medical license for coming out against vaccines some years ago. And uh, I've gone through his whole case and everything. And and uh, Richard Horton at the Lancet totally, you know, it was a total setup against. Uh, against uh, uh wakefield in my opinion but uh let's get on to uh some of these other points here um so uh, do you have anything to say about the gdl's interest in manly palmer hall and the secret destiny of america that's listed on their website no i don't that, that i don't I, I don't know i haven't seen that all right so okay so what can we i honestly haven't even thought about the gdl in a couple months Oh really? Like we did our work on them, and it was it was done. We put everything out there for everyone to see. We put all the evidence out there for everyone to see. So we've we've done our our, our part as far as I'm concerned. And now there's as far as I'm concerned, there's real problems to deal with. And these ridiculous paid shills are not a real problem. They're just actually a bunch of incel jokes who sit around, you know, larping in live streams. So it's it, I mean it's not really an issue. If you'll notice, all of them, when you go to any of their of their channels, they all have the same thousand subscribers, right? So it's not even like they're growing or they're this huge movement. It's just whenever one of them opens up a channel, the same thousand people that go to, to all of their channels just go and subscribe to the next one. See, and then uh, what this uh, New York bad guy is doing is he's bringing up, you know, the 2% of whatever Jews that were the moil uh, at circumcision sucks I don't, you know, I don't find that attractive in the least, but, you know, they'll bring up these little things or they'll bring up 9-11 or anything to pull away from the overall facts, you know. And what they do is they use these blanket statements like Jews rather than, 
you know, stating specifically these specific moils who do this uh, practice. And he's which says, are only in in very very specific ultra orthodox communities. No one else does that. Right. So, but they love to point out the the one or two that do because, after all, that's representative of all Jews. Only donations, LOL, awkward. Yeah, I run on donations. I have for years. Anybody who watches my show knows that. Um, so what can you say about, uh, you know, well, you and I had talked the other day about, you know, this whole thing and they're running. What can you say about some of these other people in the uh, GDL? Have you, have you tracked them? What have you, uh, what have you done? What's your understanding of their operations? You know, what's their ultimate goal essentially? As I said, their ultimate goal is to collect information on as many people as they possibly can. Because as many people as sign up for their websites and their email lists and things like that, those are more information that they have to give to Tom Steyer. Now, if you look at what Tom Steyer and his brother, uh, Jim Steyer, do, their main business at this point is called Common Sense Media. They do all of the ratings for Netflix, for Hulu, for NBC, okay, for Amazon Music, for Amazon Video. And if you'll look, like all of the drag queen uh, child out storytelling hours and, and all of the shows like that, they give them five stars appropriate for all children, but anything that supports like, you know, the military, they give an NC-17. Their goal is to show that this is why we have to stop showing certain things, why we have to censor certain things. Their goal is to use data to show how it is that someone like Donald Trump can get elected, you know, using data analytics, because they're looking at the same analytics that, that Donald Trump was. They know that there's a certain level of conspiracy theorists out there who will believe crap that they hear online. Okay, so then so, the, the goal is to skew their own numbers by paying shills like these GDL hacks uh, to skew the numbers for their own reports. Well, Tenel88 says they don't even have a website. They used to. And they used to all have it the in GDL their... The GDL doesn't have a website. That's a lie because I was on it earlier today doing research and... Uh, gdl.info i don't recommend people go to it because apparently they do use phishing software as you said but uh the website is there so that's a flat out lie again this tenille really likes to lie a lot that's interesting uh you know and it, she obviously knew that uh you know that you had already called her out before for saying that handsome truth and these guys never call for violence and you already proved that wrong so this person is clearly you know very disreputable Oh, for sure. And they had a website. It was when we proved that it was loaded with phishing software that all of a sudden they all took it off their profiles. And then they had Michael Parkhurst come on to claim that he never even asked them if he could run the website. Now, Handsome Truth signed up for all these websites. He promoted the websites. They were all in his in his bios. They were in Adam Green's bios. They were in Sway Guevara's bios. And then all of a sudden, when we when we exposed the fact that they were loaded with phishing software, they mysteriously took them down. We have the screenshots of when they were there and then the next day when they weren't. You know, and right. and this is what they did. And then they had Parkhurst come on and say he never once asked Handsome Truth if he could actually make the website. He just did it himself. And he only has the typical data collection stuff in there in order to improve the performance of the websites. You know, but their main goal, the main reason they exist is to be able to give the left the ability to name the Nazis. Because remember, this is all about censorship. That's exactly what they're going for. That's what the left wants. They want to define our words, our thoughts, and our politics as violence. So how better to define it as violence? By pointing out people like Pat Little, by pointing out people like Handsome Truth, and going, see, those people are out there. This is why we need to censor. This is why we need to kick people off YouTube, why we need to kick people off Twitter, why we need to kick people off Facebook, because they'll come out and do that. Now, let's talk about this uh, shooting in the uh, synagogue last year. That was actually related to the, the guy was saying stuff that the GDL was putting out, wasn't he? It was that, but it was more Pat Little. He was more quoting Pat Little. Okay. Who Pat Little is another one who just has this entire made-up story that, that came out of nowhere. And if, as, it doesn't even require much effort to find out how much of a liar he is. And what's funny is, is that I don't even have to do the research. People like me don't even have to do much of the research. Because the hardcore Nazis are so angry at these people that they do the research to prove that they're Jew shills, you know? So then you look at it and you just have to fact check them and see if they're right, you know? And, and it's, it really is that funny, you know? Like Pat Little, like there was a guy, I think his name was Morpheus or something like that. He did tireless research proving Pat Little was, was full of it. 
And all you had to do was some legit research to, to fact check him and see if he was right. And he was, you know, and that's their other thing they love to do is point out that anyone who disagrees with them is a Jew. Right. So you can't have an opinion because you ha you're Jewish. So you must have they, they tried it on Adam Green. I used to make fun of Adam Green nonstop because of this. When they called Adam Green a Jew, he put up pictures of his mother bringing him and putting him on Santa's lap in, in a mall when he was a kid and go, see, I wouldn't have sat in Santa's lap if I were Jewish, would I? Like that was his that was his like closing argument. It was really funny. <laughs> you know, well, you know, and I've tried to get. Adam Green to look at Islam more, and he absolutely refuses. He'll acknowledge that these quotes that these GDL people and the others pass around, uh, Benjamin, Owen Benjamin is another one that's been passing them around lately. He'll acknowledge that they're all fakes, but he won't acknowledge that Islam is any sort of a threat. Well, anyone who won't acknowledge that Islam is a threat is either willfully ignorant or lying. You know, like it's impossible to not see the threat from Islam. There's there's just too much overwhelming evidence that Islam is a threat. In fact, the most overwhelming evidence is they say it. If you <laughs> well, talk, if you talk to any Islamic imam out there other than Imam Tahiti, all of them will say our goal is Sharia law. Our goal is to take over everywhere where we are. Our goal is to implement this. Our goal is to implement that. Kill, and then, a, kill the kuffar. Um, you know, and, uh, yeah, like you said, it, it, you know, but here's the thing is Islam's texts actually say very openly the things that, that are accused of the Jews that aren't found in Jewish texts. Of course, because you know why it's too hard to research. If they say the Jewish texts say X, right. And what are you going to do? Go search through the thousands of Jewish texts out there to prove that they're not true. See dragon right? slayer. I respected you all be unsubscribing from you, by the way, Jews are overrepresented in all Western countries. Look it up. See, you know, we're, we're talking about how Islam is a much larger threat. And then, you know, see what they want us to do. And it's a fake account. Of course, what they want us to do is only look at the bloods and not the crypts. Mm -hmm. Of course, because and also think about what he said. Jews are overrepresented everywhere in Western countries. OK, overrepresented where? And is there a reason for it? Is, you know, the most common one that I ever hear is that Jews are overrepresented in the media. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And so if you hear let's let's use An Andrew Anglin's numbers. OK, Andrew Anglin says that 24 percent of, of the media are Jews of B level employees and up 24 percent. But they only make up 2 percent of the population. But the part that he leaves out is that 96% of the national media is located in New York City. And how, what's the population Jewish of New York City? 22%. It's really not that odd that 22% of the city where 96% of the media have located are Jews. It's actually a direct proportional representation of the city. So it's really funny to hear about this overrepresentation because they're able to pull a math problem using faulty data. If the, if the national media were located all over the United States proportionally, then it would be an overrepresentation. But they're not. 96% of them are located in New York City. Very good point. Uh, what do you have to say about this guy? Uh, let me see. Uh, of course, it's a fake name. Gerald Lebowitz. I'm going to puke listening to this rat and Shabos. New York bad guys signing off. F U Halsley laughing out loud. See, this is just this is the same. So why don't we just play cat and mouse with these mice in the thread for a while? Well, well, it's it's really fun because they they always point out the Kalergi plan, which was a newspaper article. So therefore, someone wrote a newspaper article. Therefore, it must be. And Barbara Spector, who's a nobody, okay, she runs a nonprofit in I think Sweden that has fifteen members. And she said Jews will be instrumental in multiculturalism. So they love to throw out Barbara Specter because she said this publicly as if somehow she was elected chairman of the Jews. You know what I'm saying? Right, that, right. Her, that her saying something stupid. And you can find a Marxist that says all the same thing. Or, you, or a black person or whatever, you know. Or what they love to, to, to completely close their eyes to is the Catholic Church. Right. That's what they love to close their eyes to. The Catholic Church has a defined leader, the Pope. Right. There's there's no argument there. The pope is where the buck stops. Right. He has hundreds, if not thousands of organizations throughout North and South America dedicated solely to getting migrants to the U.S. and resettling them. 
but do you ever hear about the migrant pro the migrant uh, support that's coming from the Catholic Church? No, they never even mention it. You know, but they love to mention the Jewish organizations because, after all, it's the Jews that control everything. Lloyd says if they attacked Islam, they would alienate 50 percent of their support base since they are allied with Islam in Jewish hate. What is it? Lloyd, who's a guest on my show, he just Skyped this. He's not in the chat. Maybe he should ju jump in the chat there. But he says if they attacked, if the GDL attacked Islam, they would alienate 50 percent of their support base since they are allied with Islam in Jewish hate. So is so is Pat Little. Right. Pat Little suggested that they take the aid that goes to, um, to to Israel and give it to Lebanon and Iran. That was his his big plan. His also and also to invade Israel, obviously. But um, and then someone says, Halsey, mitzvahs are a point based system where Talmud observers are encouraged to hire and do favors for each other. Do I deny this? Yes. The word mitzvah means commandment. It's a commandment from God. Like, don't work on the Sabbath. That's a mitzvah. It has nothing to do with the Talmud or exchanging favors or hiring anybody. Yeah. It, well, and we've already gone through the Talmud stuff and we're going to do more on it, you know, but we've debunked their. We've debunked about 90% of these, uh, or no, about 99% of these quotes. And we found one in the, in the uh, Munich manuscript that is questionable, but all of the other translations don't have uh, any of these points that they are trying to represent or trying to present. Uh, Lloyd says they are misrepresenting Barakat, an Islamic point-based system. Yeah, I, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, so. I don't. I don't either. So, uh, you know, <laughs> and and Lloyd keeps uh, beeping the uh, Skype thing here. Uh, many of the claims they make are directly from Islam or Islamic apologetics, and that's absolutely true. Do you know anything about this guy, uh, Brendan O'Connell? Uh, no, I don't. No. Yeah, and he apparently pulled his channel a month or two ago, but he was in there spreading a lot of this stuff and. You know, maybe he just uh, got tired of, uh, you know, and I was going to have the guy on to see what he had to say. And uh, he started, you know, because we were also exposing Islam, that was not acceptable. So that was a big red flag as well. Well, yeah, what yeah. I love is, again, you have another guy, Zyklon B. Peterson. As for Patrick Little and the GDL being 50 percent supported by Muslims, I don't recall ever seeing Arabic names in the chats or comments. Why don't you watch Patrick Little's stream the day after he lost? when he said that he knows that he actually probably won because every mosque in the state voted for him. And then he held up pictures of all of the advertisements that supposedly the mosques were, were handing out for. Him. It's from his own mouth, not mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, this is just what they do. You know, they, they have their top list of, talk, you know, talking points and they have to stick to those, uh, yeah, Justin says uh, Zyklon BS. That's well, think funny. about it. His name is Zyklon B. Yeah. And he wants to convince you that he's not really like a hater. Right. You know, like like that he's just pointing out things, but he's naming himself after a gas that killed Jews in the, in the Holocaust. Well, you know, it's like uh, these these guys jump in my Facebook page yesterday and they start a, a shit storm. And then, uh, you know, uh, I remove one of them and then another one starts complaining his page was called Andy Semite, and he starts complaining that I was the cause of his page being banned, which was clearly based on hate speech, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's like, oh, you know, we're going to we got to blame Jan because I got banned for my hate speech that I spread everywhere, which is in the very name of my account. You know, it's just, you know, it's it's, uh, you know, low IQ people, you know, paid shills that are, are paid to do this. They're they're probably paid per post to post all of this stuff in the chat. I, as I said, I don't know if all of the shills are paid. It's it's handsome truth in them that are paid. And like someone said before, that that handsome truth is an idiot, but yet he can program a website of phishing stuff, which I clearly said he didn't. Michael Parkhurst did. Michael Parkhurst is a computer programmer and Michael Parkhurst is a mod in all Handsome Truth channels. And Michael Parkhurst did a whole stream with Handsome Truth where he explained why the phishing software was there and tried to make it seem all innocent. But I never said that Handsome Truth did it himself, but they love to just put words in your mouth. Right. You want to answer this uh, super chat that just came up and thanks for the super chat. Let it let the truth come out. So the, the evidence of GDL's links to Islam or others. 
the the evidence of their links to Islam is not that they're linked. Islam is not an organization, right? It's a political movement that's based on a, a kind of faulty religion. Correct. But when well you said. you you can't say they have a link to Islam as if Islam is an organization. What it is is that their active support of Islam and their active apologetics for Islam and their active like attributions towards Judaism and all of that, you know. Is exactly is mirror Islam's. And people love to say this too. Look up Ryan, Ryan Dawson. Zionism is destroying the West and our biggest enemy. I have Ryan Dawson on all the time. Yeah. Okay. I had a big debate with him on Worski and I have him on my show. I just had him on like two weeks ago. Okay. Talking about censorship. I don't mind that I disagree with Ryan Dawson on almost anything. There's something called debate where people have opinions. Other people have other opinions and there's evidence and you can point it out to each other without having to go, resort to ridiculous stuff. Ryan Dawson is a nice guy, you know, and he's someone that, as I said, I talk to all the time. So the idea that Ryan Dawson has something on me is nuts because Ryan Dawson doesn't think bad of me and I don't think bad of Ryan Dawson. We just disagree on a lot, you know? You know, one thing that I find interesting is when you understand, which I recommend people getting going into the channel, into my channel and, and watching our series on I Islam and what it is, uh, once you get that foundational understanding of Islam, it really opens your eyes to all of these other agendas out there. Mm -hmm. It really does. And, and at the same time, people love to question the Holocaust, right? And it's funny because they love throwing this stuff at me because they don't know my views on these things, right? They, they just love assuming that I toe the line on everything, which I don't toe the line on basically anything. Well, they right. called you a Zionist before the show. Do you support Zion, uh, Zionist uh, Israel and funding Israel? It's, I do not believe that, Amer that American aid should be going to Israel. I think that American aid is bad for Israel, and I think it's bad for America. So I don't, I don't believe that a dollar should go to Israel. I think that it holds Israel back from, from advancing, and I think it holds America back from advancing. But the American aid to Israel has nothing to do with aid. It has everything to do with mili the military-industrial complex. So, I mean, most people say, oh, they're funding Israel's socialist system or they're funding this. 96% of the money that goes from America to there has to be spent on American military goods, right? It's, it's a giant welfare program for the military industrial complex. Right. Because they get to, instead, of getting to, instead of showing that they get billions of dollars of weapons out for free, they make them purchase the weapons with money that they give them to purchase the weapons. And they say, oh, we give this money to Israel and we get nothing in return. Well, what's nothing in return? Every single thing that's developed by Israel aeronautics industry and Israel's defense industry gets an American patent on it because it was developed with American money. All of that stuff gets produced in America and gets sold to the rest of the world from America. Even the Iron Dome, which was developed and is produced and is uh, uh, manufactured in Israel, is purchased from America. They, they have to actually purchase their own stuff from America because America owns the patent on it. Let's see. Lloyd asks, why do they also fund Egypt and Pakistan? Pakistan was funding Islamic Jihad. Egypt gets more than Israel does. Good point. Egypt does not get more than, than Israel does. No? No, but it was part of, it was something that Carter came up with in the 70s, that he got Israel to give back the Sinai, which they captured after the 67 war. And in return, Egypt would get American military goods, which would get them to supposedly stop firing stuff from the Russians, which they didn't do anyway. But um, what's it called? But that, that's why Egypt gets so much American aid is because of the peace deal from the 70s. Uh, Slava Ukraine is going crazy in there. Um, let's see. Yeah, you know, Brady, Alex, 5G question mark. Anything to I say? Don't know. I don't understand this whole 5G thing. Like, I see a lot of people are upset about 5G cell networks, but I don't know why. And honestly, I just have to say I've never looked into it, so I don't know why. Okay. No, well, that's that's all you have to say is you haven't looked into it. You don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, the Talpiot program? The Talpiot program is the same thing as the GI Bill. That's literally what the Talpiot program is, is it takes people that they, they find as being very gifted in the Army and pay for them to go to college. That's the Talpiot program. And, that's, and for some reason, they like to act like it's a Mossad program to train people in like you know, computer programming and all of that to work for the country. It literally is Israel's mandatory conscription, right? Everybody goes into the army at 18. What they do is they find the true geniuses that have enlisted in the army. And instead of sending them to the army, they send them to college. That's the Talpio program. 
USS Liberty. Well, okay. So this I'll, I'll address because they love to throw the Liberty into into my face, especially right. Right, because they, you are you are Israeli apparently and not American, right? I am Israeli. Oh, you are. Actually. Yes. Oh, okay. Just so you know, I moved to Israel for ten years. Um, I was I was I was doing a beat out there, and I had a job out there. Okay. Um, so I declared my dual citizenship because you have to pay taxes, and the tax rate is sixty two percent if you're not a citizen. So I declared my citizenship to do it. I actually am giving my citizenship back because I don't want it anymore. But at the time, I had to do it. So I actually am an Israeli citizen. Okay, good to know. Mm -hmm. So what about uh, USS Liberty? Hit that. But here's the thing. Even if everything they say is true, which I don't know if it's true or not. I've read all the official documents. I've read all of the unofficial documents. There is absolutely no clear evidence one way or the other. Okay. And obviously the CIA and the Mossad are not going to release true government documents as to what happened if there was something bad. Okay. But let's say everything they're saying is true that Israel willingly attacked a, an American ship during a time of war in order to stop them from doing this or able to convince them to come into the war, whatever the reasoning may be, what would be the prescribed remedy? It would be that Israel apologized and pay reparation, pay some form of remuneration, right? Because we're not going to say, well, they attacked a ship in the 60s, therefore let's invade, okay, here in the 2000s. Right. So Israel already did that. They apologized and they paid remuneration to all of the families from the USS Liberty. Well, you know, and uh, the f two weeks, 10 days after Israel announced its statehood, and what year was that? 1948. Uh, 1948, they shot uh, uh, Thomas Campbell Wasson, the uh, U.S. ambassador to Israel. And, uh, you know, and so, and interestingly, you know, and I found the CIA documents for Thomas Campbell Wasson, but R. Gordon Wasson, his brother, was one of the key figures be behind the CIA's uh, MKUltra uh, subproject 58. And uh, I've done a lot of research exposing him, but, uh, you know, there's the, the dates coincide between Wasson launching magic mushrooms to the world and the assassination of his brothers by a Jew. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know anything about it. So yeah. it, it may, 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 or it may not be true. I just don't know anything about it. Yeah. So people, lots, lots of name calling in there. You're a clown. I can't listen to you anymore. You're a clown. Anything that challenges what, you know, the hate speech line is you got to be called a clown ad hominems. Um, of course, they don't present anything more than the official agenda. You know, and, if, you know, they what we did was we went through and showed how all of these Talmud quotes that they were citing were totally fake. You notice they're not uh, mentioning the fake Talmud quotes now, but uh, all of those quotes were fakes and or completely taken out of context. And you said that you've actually read the Talmud in one of your other shows. You've said you've read it twice. And, uh, you know, I've read, you know, probably five or 600 pages of it. It's some of the most dreary, boring reading I've ever read. And all the legalese and pill pull stuff, breaking stuff down, you know, the peppering to break it down into its minutia, I found uh, extremely boring. But, you know, it, it, what they'll do is they'll show one line or one sentence or at most one paragraph while like, o omitting the entire rest of the uh, section that actually breaks down and concludes that topic. Of course, be because it's easy to selectively pick stuff out of anything. If you're, if you want, you can pick the, you can pick up the Christian Bible and you could just selectively take passages and go see the Christian Bible is evil because the left does it all the time. You know, they, they point out to some in, insignificant passage that doesn't mean even close to what they claim it does. And they do it in a way so that they can make Christianity look bad. Right. Or they'll, they'll cite something from the Old Testament, the Torah, and then blame it on Christianity, the New Testament. I see that probably just about every day. Yeah, they pretty much do. So uh, anything else we should address in this? Um, no, I mean, it's, it's one of those things like, I mean, it, it's over so overwhelming that a lot of times I go blank on where to where to start next, <laughs> you know, but the GDL are probably the biggest joke out there. I mean, Pat Little is a pretty much a, a bad joke because ever since his loss in the Senate, his new thing is that he, he has a business where you can pay him to come to your town and, and run around with signs saying like Jew, Jews rape kids 
in the center of town and act like an asshole. So that's his new business. He calls it his Jew naming business. So that's that's what he does. So him and the GDL are probably an equal level joke. Yeah, well, it's been, uh, you know, <coughs> fun exposing them with you today. I appreciate you coming on, Halsley. And, uh, you know, they've they've put out like 19 hit piece videos on me in the last two and a half, three weeks. And it's, you know, just become a joke at this point. And this this clown, Gary, says, what about Chris Dorsey? Um, I don't know, because Chris Dorsey did a hit piece on me, too, where he, he got me on uh, Skype and then called me an agent for 45 minutes where I told him I wasn't. Every time I tried to answer, he interrupted me and called me an agent. And then they all these clowns in the GDL like to use like clips of that as like evidence that somehow I was exposed. Yeah, so because they got you. Oh, they That's got true. me. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, ooh, wow, I'm scared. So, you know, if, if anything from that, uh, Chris Dorsey exposed himself, but, uh, um, you know, people had to admit that they were ignorant or liars after we debunked the Talmudic claims. And so, yeah, they couldn't do it. You know, you could, you know, Daniel Walker of Activist News could not admit he was wrong. So what he did was... He pulled up dictionary definitions and would show one line on screen and said, see, it's here, while ignoring it, you know, and avoiding showing the whole rest of the text in context. In context. So just atypical behavior. Um, so I, d I don't know anything about, someone keeps asking about Poseidon and Vanguard. Your, your mic just went a little low there. I don't know what happened. Sorry, is it better now? Yep, got it. Sorry. Um, I don't know who Poseidon is. I think he might be, on, and I think Vanguard is what used to be um, Heel Turn. So I'm not sure if that's who they're talking about. Um, Osric, Osric Leon, I can't even read, read the name. But if, oh no, it's not that, I'm sorry. Eagle Grande, Poseidon, Vanguard. If Vanguard is Heel Turn, then Heel Turn aren't paid shills. Heel Turn are just scumbags. Because Heel Turn, Heel Turn was Joachim, who is, he's a guy who started Backyard Blood Sports. He actually used to be a friend of mine. Um, he reached out to me when he first started ba Backyard Blood Sports, and then basically Mike Enoch like promised him his own show on on uh, on Right Side if he would just turn against me and like you know get angry with me. So he tried to start with me after that, and I just ignored him. You know, so it's it's really funny. Um, but I, as far as I know, Joe Kim is not a paid shill. He's just an asshole, and I don't know who Poseidon is. So. Yeah, you know, they've they've been calling me a paid shill every day since we started exposing uh, Islam and the fake Talmud quotes that they all spread around. So the Talmud was so important until it was discovered that you were all lying about it. That's very well said, Lloyd. Well, I love how notice he won't answer exactly what the American taxpayers get for funding Israel's military for them, which I literally answered exactly what they get. So if I, I don't understand, like maybe you just didn't listen. But I literally said exactly what they got. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Halsley, for coming on the, this afternoon, this evening, your time. I guess it's almost 9 o'clock your time. I really appreciate it. The sun's still shining bright here. It's uh, getting pretty hot here in Southern California. But uh, at least you're not here, one of the <laughs> most communist places in the country now. It's a, it's a joke here. Well, what so. I always say is that is that if you want something that can unite the right and left and bring healing to this country, the one issue is getting California to secede. If we can get them to do that, the, the left want it, the right want it. It's something we can all agree on. And all the demographic issues that you hear about in America go bye bye. Well, the issue so. is, you know, except for the major cities, California is mostly conservative, but they, you know, they strong they stronghold the whole state, you know, and all the. Uh, inland areas and you know the farmlands and all of that with these you know with these uh, cities along the coast and you know where all of the uh, illegal immigration runs into yeah and i mean it's it's unfortunate but in california like i mean the cities control everything and the cities are literally unlivable at this point did you see they put out a map of san francisco of all of the reports that have been called into the cops about people shitting on the street yeah the entire city is covered with shit like literally you can't see the city from all the reports there's just little dots of shit everywhere 
and it covers up the entire city. Well, you know, and now that we have this uh, new governor, not that Jerry Brown wasn't bad enough, but, you know, now they want to cover the whole state and shit, you know? Of course, because, you know, why not? You know, if, if, if you can't get shit and AIDS needles everywhere, then, I mean, what kind of city are you? Right. Well, you know, and then these uh, liberal nut jobbers, they, they banned the uh, grocery store bags. And so what happened is you had an outbreak in disease because the homeless people would crap in the bags and throw them away. Now they don't have anything to crap in. And so disease started spreading <laughs> everywhere. Also, California is the first state to ban plastic bags, but unban having sex with someone when you're HIV positive on purpose. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, and uh, California also now, if you're caught with methamphetamine, cocaine, whatever, the cops aren't even allowed to take it from you anymore. You know, they just, you know, pat you on the head and send you on your way. You know, you know, maybe you could make better choices, don't you think? You know, and so drugs are rampant. Uh, you know, I mean, they've turned it into a literal shithole and then they blame the uh, the right for all of the problems in the state, you know. Okay, John so Urban quick. proving to be a sellout with each episode he releases. What a disappointment. How much you want to bet that Dan Balsamo is a sock account? Let's see. Yes, a sock account. There's Dan Balsamo's fake empty sock account. You know? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, over and over and over, you just you, you just click on their accounts and you look at them and they're always empty. They're always, you know, brand new accounts. But uh, so real quick, let me answer this as he says, other than military industrial complex contracts, what is the benefit to the taxpayers? Which is funny because it's like saying, well, without money, how do you show that something is a benefit? But the other benefit is the patents. As I said, Israel is probably the most industrious nation in developing military equipment in the world. And all of the patents that are used, that are developed with American money, which is all of them, go to America. America gets the patent. Israel only gets a royalty when America sells it. Israel developed the, the helmet for the F-35, inclu and including the thrust system for the F-35. So that was all developed with American military aid. So if you just want a couple examples. Yeah, Dr. Meng Mengel, if, if that doesn't say enough, says that, uh, calls, him, calls me Juden Irving, as if... Uh, you know, as if Jan doesn't pronounce well enough that I'm freaking Danish, like, hello, duh. But, you know, so this guy's got 74 subscribers. And then, of course, he's your typical GDL uh, hate promoter here. Uh, Israel Gates, Aspirings America, Trump in the Third Temple, Jews took over China, uh, Trump's happy Easter message. So that's from Dr. Mengel. Very clever, not very... Curves, I don't know how I can say this more. So the American military complex wins, the taxpayers lose. Thanks for proving my point. I didn't have to prove it. That's word for word what I said. <laughs> That's why I said I don't support military aid to Israel. I don't support aid to Israel, period. I say let them stand on their own two feet. That's what I said literally explicitly. And I said I don't have to prove your point when it was my point. That's exactly what I said. Word uh, word. You know, Todd uh, Finzer has an excellent point there. San Francisco banned straws, but needles litter the streets everywhere. Yeah. And someone just asked, is Halsey a relative of Admiral Halsey from World War II? Yes, he's my great, great uncle, which is why my father's name is Halsey. My name is Halsey and my kids' names are Halsey. Well, and I appreciate you being forthright and disclosing that and your Israeli citizenship and everything, you know, because anybody, if you're Jewish, you know, obviously these people all want you dead. So, you know, it takes a lot of nerve on your part, I'm sure, to come out and, you know, uh, face people who want you dead uh, just for existing and, you know, telling another point of view. You know, and these, oh, yeah. these people are you know, supposed to be for the United States and freedom of speech, but they're all trying to get our channels shut down and get free speech overturned so that they can point at groups, you know, or shows like ours and say, look at all the hate speech, you know. And, uh, you know, they are actually the example that, uh, that they try to accuse us of. Of course. And yes, Islamic terrorists want me dead. I'm on three ISIS kill on site lists. So absolutely, they want me dead. Three ISIS kill on site list. Wow. Yep. I've been reporting on them for years, ever since they first came out. Wow. Well, and how do you find out that you're on a kill list? 
the FBI comes to your house and tells you. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's how you get a concealed carry in New Jersey, too. Oh, well, thank goodness in California you don't have to go that Well, in some areas you do, but uh, in other areas you don't, so... Oh, wow. All right. Well, thanks, uh, Halsley. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, thanks, all of you uh, people who have above an 85 IQ that participated in the show tonight and in the, in the chat. Uh, for the rest of you, go collect your, your shill checks and, uh, you know, go Pat, ha uh, Pat Handsome Truth and Patrick Little and the other, you know, fakes on the, on the head. Um, you know, go, go get your checks and all for, you know, giving you a little job there for, you know, I, I don't know if you get, you know, pay for play, pay for post or whatever you get, but, uh, you know, par diem or whatever. So go well, collect how awesome this is, right? They have 87 dislikes on your channel, right. which they don't realize don't affect the algorithm. But what does affect the algorithm is the 87 people that disliked your show showed up as viewers which actually bumps your show higher for people to see. So thanks a lot, guys. Good job. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you know, we're not accusing them of being thinkers or, you know, or yeah. honest oh, people. So what's that? Well, do your research. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, good night, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks, Halsley. And uh, we'll see you uh, next, probably next Tuesday. Got a great show lined up with Todd. We'll have uh, more to expose that the... Uh, you know, that the simpletons out there will dislike. And uh, anyway, until then, see you uh, next week. See you later, man. Thanks for having me.